So let's look at more complicated scenarios with solving our linear equations. So what we have here is um, some steps that we can follow. So if you follow through these steps, this can get you through solving these more complicated linear equations, even simple ones. It would just mean that you would maybe skip some steps. Um, so let's go ahead and talk through these steps on the left hand side here. And while we talk through them, we'll solve this example. So looking at this example, I can tell that this is an equation because I have that equal sign there. And I want to keep my eye on that equal sign, making sure that it follows through in my work. Um, sometimes students lose the equal sign and then that kind of becomes an algebraic expression instead of equation and can make things difficult. So um, what I can see here is I have some work to do before I can start solving, meaning with these parentheses, these expressions are complicated, so I need to do some simplifying first. So that's this first step here. Simplify both sides of the equation. So I'll be using our order of operations. So as we do this, think about PEMDAS, our order of operations. And then if there are fractions, multiply every term by the least common denominator. Now, I don't have fractions in this case, so we're going to skip over that. However, we're going to go through two examples after this, and one of them will deal with fractions, so I'll show you that step there. So first step, simplifying. So what I need to do is simplify these. If I look inside the parentheses, I want to look to see if there's anything to simplify. X minus 3 can't combine. They're unlike terms. 6 minus 4x are unlike terms. So there's nothing to do inside the parentheses. But what I do have is multiplication with something outside the parentheses. So I need to distribute. So on the left-hand side of this equation, I need to distribute that 7 in there. So what I'll have is 4 plus 7 times x, and then 7 times a negative 3, which is negative 21. And then that equal sign, we just need to make sure that that carries down. Now on the right-hand side of the equation, we have that negative 17. And then what I have here is this negative 1 times those parentheses. So I need to distribute that negative 1. So we'll have the negative 17, negative 1 times 6, negative 1 times negative 4x, positive 4x. Okay, then I just need to see if I can keep simplifying, which I can because I have these like terms that I can combine on both sides of the equation. So that 4 minus 21, so let's see, I'll put the 7x out front. And then 4 minus 21 will be a negative 17. And then carry down my equal sign. And on the right-hand side of the equation, I have that negative 17 and negative 6, which I can combine to be a negative 23. So I'm going to have 4x minus 23. So notice that so far, I haven't moved across the equal sign at all. I haven't um, done operations to both sides of the equation. It's kind of like I looked at this left-hand side as a single expression and just simplified that expression down and then kind of kept the equal sign as a barrier. And then this right-hand side took that as an expression and simplified it down. So that's our first step all completed. We simplified both sides of the equation. I know they're fully simplified because I can't combine anything else since those are unlike terms. All right, so let's move to step two. Collect all the variable terms on one side of the equation. So what that means is I want everything with x on one side of the equation, and then um, we can kind of, yeah, let's just do that step, because we could do three kind of together with this one, but let's just focus on step two. So it doesn't matter. I can move 7x to the right-hand side of the equation, or I can move 4x to the left hand side of the equation. Something we typically do to avoid negative numbers is to move the smaller of the two. So comparing 7 and 4, since 4 is smaller, I'm more inclined to move that one. Either way works though. You'll get to the same answer in the end. So um, either way, I'm going to go with this method of moving the smaller so that we can just avoid negatives. I mean, sometimes you can't avoid negatives, but 
in this case, we're going to try. So that 4x, so to move it, it's a positive 4x. So that means I need to subtract 4x from both sides of the equation. So what this will give us is 7x minus 4x. So that will leave us with positive 3x minus 17 equals negative 23. So what this did is it moved everything with our variable to one side of the equation. So now x is only showing up on this left-hand side of the equation. It's no longer on the right-hand side, which is perfect. All right, step three. Collect all constant terms on the other side of the equation. So any just numbers, we want to move those to the other side. So this whole process is about isolating x. We want to get that all alone. But what we have right now is this negative 17 being added on or subtracted on. So what I need to do is move this negative 17 away. So minus 17, the opposite would be positive 17. So I want to add 17 to both sides of the equation. So by doing that, we would have 3x all alone on one side of the equation equals negative 23 plus 17, which would leave us with negative 6. So those steps two and three, I said use addition subtraction. That's coming through as what operation are we doing to both sides of the equation. And we're taking care of addition subtraction first so that we can just get to this single term equals a single term. And specifically a term with x equals a constant. All right, fourth step. Make the coefficient of the variable term equal to positive 1. And this step will be using multiplication division. So what I want to do is get x completely isolated to the point where I have just a positive 1 out front. But right now it's being multiplied by 3. So to undo that multiplication with 3, I need to divide by 3. And I'll do that to both sides of the equation. So we'll have x equals... And negative 6 divided by 3 is negative 2. And then our final step is to check the solution. Always check your answer, especially during an exam. It'll let you know with 100% certainty whether or not you got the right answer. So what you could do is check. And you can even just take this to a calculator and plug it in. Um, I'm going to skip through it just to move ahead in this video, but the I would idea would be to take negative 2, go back to the original equation, how it was printed on your paper, plug in negative 2, plug in negative 2, and when you simplify both sides of the equation, you should get the same answer. Let's go ahead and move on to our two more examples to go through it a little more quickly, but with the same steps coming through. All right, first thing we want to do, simplify both sides of the equation. So I'm going to need to distribute that positive 9. I'm also going to need to distribute, and if it helps, you can think of that as a negative 1 right there. We need to distribute that negative 1 in. So this will give us 1 and then positive 9 times m, positive 9 times negative 5, which is negative 45. equals, and then we have this negative 53. Distributing the negative 1 in, negative 1 times positive 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 4m is a positive 4m. So that took care of our multiplication. Then we just want to look for like terms. So we have this 1 minus 45 that can combine on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side of the equation, we have this negative 53 minus 1. So on the left-hand side, we have this 9m. 1 minus 45 will be a negative 44 equals, we'll have this 4m. Negative 53 minus 1 is a negative 54. So that was our first step of simplifying both sides of the equation. Now I'm going to start moving across the equation, starting with addition subtraction, so I can get my variable term on one side of the equation and my constant term on the other. So starting with my variable term, I want to move, and since 4 is smaller, I'm going to go ahead and move that 4m. So I'm going to subtract 4m from both sides of the equation. 
So 9m minus 4m will leave us with 5m. Then we'll still have that minus 44 there equals, and then on the right-hand side, those 4m's cancel out. They turn into a zero, so all we have left over is a negative 54. Then my variable term is over on this left-hand side, but we have this subtraction with 44 that I need to move away, so I'm gonna add 44 to both sides. So 5m is alone on one side of the equation, equals negative 54 plus 44 is a negative 10. And then I'm at the third step, which is to use multiplication division to completely isolate m. So we have a numerical coefficient of positive 1. So since m is being multiplied by 5, I want to divide by 5. So with this, we'll have m equals negative 10 divided by 5 is negative 2. And then we would want to take this extra minute or so, except I'm going to skip ahead so we can get this lecture through, but we'd want to go and check our answer by taking that negative 2 and plugging it in to the original equation. All right, so that one was similar to the example we started with, just a little more quickly with the steps that we go through. Let's look at a case with fractions. Now, you have the tools and the ability to add, subtract, multiply, divide fractions. However, as we start getting into algebra, we want to skip that work as much as possible. We want to avoid fraction work, just to make things a bit easier. So there's a way to do that with linear equations. Instead of dealing with these as fractions, we can take a step to wipe out all of the fractions. The first thing we would need to do is to find the least common denominator. So what finding the least common denominator means is we look at all of our denominators. So we have a 2, a 3, and a 4. And what we would want to do is look at multiples of these numbers and we would want to find the least common multiple of them. So what that would mean is going through like two multiples would be two times two is four times three times four times five. So all of these multiples of two, 12, 14, 16, 18. Multiples of three, so we would have three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, sure. Four, we would have four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24. So making this list, we wanna look for the least common value. And what we would find, so eight is close, but it's not divisible by three, but 12 shows up in all of them. And that makes it the least common multiple. Now, when we have a lot of denominators, uh, the method I just used there is kind of a pain um, because it's listing a lot of numbers. The tip we like to give in our previous algebra classes is to just list out the multiples of the largest number. So what I would do is just take four and start listing out the values and list them out until I see a number that's divisible by the other two numbers. Like eight is divisible by two, but not three. But when I would get to 12, that's divisible by three, it's also divisible by two. So now we'd know that's the least common multiple. So rather than, especially with the smaller numbers, you could just be listing for such a long time, just start with the largest number. So my least common denominator is 12. So what I wanna do is multiply every single term by this least common denominator of 12. So what that would look like, and what I'm really doing is doing 12 times the left-hand side of this equation and 12 times the right-hand side of this equation. So just on the left-hand side, we're gonna get the distributive property. So what we'll have is 12 times this 3 fourths x plus 12 times that 1 half equals 12 times the negative 11 over 3. 
So absolutely everything gets multiplied by 12, um, specifically every term, which is separated by addition and subtraction. Uh, you can notice that with that negative, I just attached it to the numerator. It could stay up front. Uh, you could have positive 11 over negative 3. Those are all the same thing. The key is that you just have one negative in there. All right. What we want to do is think about 12 divided by the denominator. So 12 divided by 4 would leave us with 3. So what we end up with is 3 times 3 times x. So that just simplifies to 9x. Then with 12 times negative or, uh, 1 half, so 12 divided by 2 would just leave us with 6. So a 6 times 1, so that would just be plus 6 equals 12 divided by 3, which would leave us with 4. So 4 times a negative 11 is a negative 44. And now we end up with a nice linear equation that does not have fractions in it. So we don't need to worry about adding, subtracting fractions with unlike denominators. We can just skip that, but it requires the step of multiplying everything by that least common denominator. And then I can just solve like up above there. So um, I need to get 9x all alone on one side, so I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides, which will be a negative 50. Then to get x all alone, I'm going to divide both sides by 9, which means we'll get x equals. I'll see if I can reduce that down, which we can't. So that is going to stay just like that. Um, to check our solutions with this, I would highly recommend using a calculator. Um, I would not do that without a calculator, but it's a matter of plugging it in and seeing what happens when you plug in negative 50 over 9 in for x there and making sure both sides of the equation balance.